Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a kaleidoscope. First, you want to start by smoothing all the wrinkles out of your shirt. And then this project is going to be centered by using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. So when I say center your shirt, it's that's what I mean. So I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, and then I'm going to line up the seams in the underarm and along the shoulder. And what this does is it creates symmetry because it puts the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt together. So that way when it's opened up, it's like a mirror image of itself and you get better saturation or I should say better even saturation that way. That way one side's not lighter or darker than the other. They're both exactly the same. Today's shirt is a Bella Canvas shirt and it's a women's cut, so that means it sort of cinches in at the waist. And it kind of creates a little bit of difficulty because the sleeve doesn't want to lay perfectly flat. Or if the sleeve is laying perfectly flat, then the body of the shirt isn't totally flat. So just do the very best you can. Now this is looking pretty good. So the next step is I just fold it up from the bottom up to the top keeping in mind where I want the center of my pattern to be. And I usually like to have the center of the pattern an inch or two down below from the underarm. I don't like any of them to be right on top of the belly button. I just don't think that's a good look. And now I'm just airplane folding. So I folded it back once, then twice. I flipped the whole project over and I'm folding it back. And then I'm going to fold it back a second time, like an airplane. With these types of folds, I like to use clips just to sort of hold everything in place. And I got these clips in the like the laundry area at Fred Meyers. And if you've done it correctly, you're gonna have a bunch of folds on the top and then just two folds on the bottom. Now for this project, I'm just going to do like an S pattern back and forth. Um, I guess this could be called, you know, a, a, an accordion fold. Um, We'll just do what I do here. I need bigger hands for this one. It's a good idea to have your rubber bands handy because right now I'm like searching for where are my rubber bands. And I'm going to be using my second favorite rubber bands on this one um, because the project is not that big and I do want it to stay fairly tight. I don't want it to come undone. Now there's all this loose fabric in the back like this, these big tails. I just decided to just fold them in on themselves and secure them in with the rubber bands as well.
Next, I create some type of an ice barrier, and I'm just using foil for this one. Um, I really like the foil that you can get at Costco. It's like heavy duty restaurant thickness, and it holds up really well to tie dyeing. And I, so I just wrapped the project up, really super simple. And now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. So I choose two colors that I know split down into a lot of the secondary colors, like the component colors. Um, so I'm going with the black cherry just because it's really beautiful and I want this to sort of have a purple vibe. And the powder pink is one of my absolute favorite colors for splits. It throws out all kinds of fun colors. And if you notice, I've set it down inside of my over the sink strainer and then have it resting in a tote. And I love these over the sink strainers because you can do multiple projects in one tote depending upon how big your tote is. So it's just super duper convenient. And I do have links for the over the sink strainers down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So make sure that you check that out. And this one's a two pack and they're pretty affordable and I use them all the time. Now I'm just going to add my ice. And I did not add soda ash because the shirt was already pre-soaked. And from my past experience, I know that I'm going to have to flip this shirt over and repeat the process. I will add the soda ash then. So if you look here, the dye didn't make it all the way through. So I'm just gonna flip it over and repeat the process. I went and washed my hands. I don't like to touch my um, dye jars with you know, dirty dye all over my fingers. I try to keep everything as clean as possible. And then when adding the powder pink, I'm going to go rather heavy with it because I want it to stick around and I don't want it to get completely lost in the black cherry. And I also want it to have a chance to penetrate through all of these thick layers of folds. So I can tell you with this one, I add, you know, the layer of ice and then I came back and checked it afterwards and I added a second layer of ice for good measure because I really wanted to make sure that there was saturation through the whole entire project. And then I let it batch for the full 48 hours after the ice melts because it's still really cold here in Oregon. It's been 48 hours and now it's time for the rinse out. And you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirillon. It's usually two cycles. And then I do a third and final hot water cycle using Milsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener and I get both Kirillon and Millsoft from Dharma Trading Company and there are the links for them down below in the description box. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Here it is guys, here's our Kaleidoscope Ice Dye after it's been washed and dried and ironed and it sure is beautiful. I really love this shirt. And I'll tell you, at first I wasn't too sure about it, but then when I ironed it, it made such a huge difference because all the intricacies of the color splits just pop right out. So I love the fact that it's monotone, you know, it's all the similar color palette. Um, but the, the splits that are coming off the powder pink are just amazing because it throws some really wild colors like blues and um, some greens. And then the black cherry, you know, it's the heavy hitter in there that sort of just like grounds the whole project. Kind of gives you more of the, like you can see the pattern of the kaleidoscope and then the, 
um, powder pink is like creating all the, I don't know, you know what I'm trying to say. It's beautiful. I absolutely love this shirt and I'm super happy with the way it turned out. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and then click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.